I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. Everybody, let's rock. The larger than life idol, the icon, the influences. That guy moves the coolest I've ever seen somebody move. That guy sings the coolest I've ever right. seen somebody sing. The approval. That's the reason I'm here. It's been done right. And the magnetic star making performance. I just feel like the luckiest so guy in the world. Like, man. Those like, prove it. The guy is the most famous person in the world. Reporting from Elvis's home in Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee, it's the 30-minute Canadian movie exclusive, Fit for a King. We do not have Elvis without black music. Right. So that moment just like, it hit me so hard. For a little more conversation, this is Elvis, all access and E-Talk special. Well, Austin Butler made it very clear to the entire world, his dedication to playing the role of Elvis, the hair, face, the voice, even the dance moves, down to the intricacies and the importance that he put on the relationship between himself and B.B. King, and of course, the love story of Priscilla Presley. When I heard about this Elvis movie, my initial thought was, mm, can't wait to see what Baz Luhrmann does with the topic of appreciation versus appropriation of black music. So, let me give credit to a film that aims to tell the incredible story of Elvis Presley by seeking the truth and not just an opinion. This is done by paying homage to his wife, his family, Memphis, to gospel music, and to black culture on a whole. Until this day, the impact and influence of Elvis lives on. Over the next 30 minutes, our team will cover every angle of this hotly anticipated film, The King's Legacy, and much more. This ain't no nostalgia show. We're gonna do something different. An estimated one billion records sold worldwide, 31 films as a movie star, 18 number one hits, a reported 400,000 impersonators, and a major celebrity fan base. Uh, I wanna say thank you. Thank you very much. But only one can be the king. If you're looking for trouble, to the right place. A comet smashed into uh, um, the world, and it happened to land in Memphis. It's altering the landscape and the climate. Elvis did that, and I think that's what the movie is about. Elvis is about the next evolution of cultural life. A showman and a pioneer, Elvis Aaron Presley is born in 1935 in Tupelo, Mississippi, moves to Memphis, Tennessee at 13, shaping his future to become the music and pop culture icon we all think we know so well, beloved by millions. Elvis, who died in 1977, carries a complicated and often controversial legacy with his ahead of his time sexuality, musicianship, and stage presence. He don't so much as wiggle the fingers. There's a lot of people saying a lot of things. But in the end, you gotta listen to yourself. It's at his family home of Graceland, a national historic landmark where three generations of Presley's former wife Priscilla, daughter Lisa Marie, and granddaughter actress Riley Keough endorse Baz Luhrmann and Austin Butler's interpretation of Elvis as a definitive film treatment. Elvis morphed into you, I have to say. You had his guidance. You had his guidance. You did it. You you really did it. In my life, it's been one disappointment after the other in terms of people portraying my father um, in various films. That's the reason I'm here. It's been done right. Tyrone Edwards from Etah. You Canada-based? Yeah, Toronto. I'm Toronto. Oh, you guys are nice. nice. Congrats. Man, thank you. Congrats. We don't know each other, but I am super happy for you because you made it very clear to the entire world your commitment to this role. Very, very clear. To hear Lisa say that she literally was unsure whether it was you or her father speaking, mm. that he morphed into your body. Man, I, I was having to hold back an ugly cry. I'll tell you that. I, I really, uh, uh, it moves me beyond any way that I can articulate it right now. Um, I felt such a responsibility the whole time but to him to, and to them. And I mean, I felt it on many levels to all his fans around the world, but but they're the core. I mean, that's that's Lisa Marie's father. Right. That's Priscilla's husband. For sure. And 
I, f I felt I didn't sleep for two years, and all, it's all I did. And it goes beyond just the film, and I just feel so blessed that I got that experience. Being in Elvis Presley's home, but hosted by the whole Presley family, dreamlike, not to mention Canada's greatest ice hockey superstar. Wayne Gretzky, the great one. And you know what? He apparently rang up the, the owner of the estate and said, I must be here. Like, I didn't... You Shout know, they just out turned to up. the great one. Not on the same level as any other experience I've ever had with movies in my life. Right. You're great, Colonel. You are the best person I could ever hope to work with. You know, this is something I, I ain't never said to nobody before. I believe I can be great, too. Austin's real-life belief grabs Baz's attention. He submits a bathrobe-clad audition video performance of Unchained Melody all to right, secure mama. this early 2019 That's screen right, test. That's all right, mama. Just any way you That's all right. And if Austin looks familiar, here's why. With beginnings on Nickelodeon and the Disney Channel. I said, now do I have to sing or dance? Because <laughs> in that case, I should get into some dancing classes. <laughs> the 30-year-old from Anaheim, California, also shares the Broadway stage with Denzel Washington in 2018's The Iceman Cometh. And a year later, he pops on the big screen as Tex in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mastering Elvis's mannerisms, singing, dancing, and changing his voice. Austin also seeks encouragement from Oscar winner Rami Malek, who gives him, quote, liberating advice on how to play a beloved rock star. Another Oscar winner in his corner, Tom Hanks. There is a, a risk and responsibility that Austin took on, and I don't know how that man did it. Tom embodies the enigmatic Colonel Tom Parker, the carny turned devious manager who discovers and sees a spark in Elvis. Without me, there would be no Elvis Presley. When he came out on stage, it was electrifying. And you could not take your eyes off him every single time. You just wanted to see him do it again and again and again and again. There's a, a quote that I wrote while we were watching the film. If you dream it, you'll do it. I think if you dream it, you'll do it. Yeah. And, and I, I feel like we saw you do that just uh, professionally. Denzel going to Baz and saying, you know, your work ethic is something he's never even seen before. How does it feel to get that kind of praise? And how excited are you for him to, to watch this? Oh, man, I, I hope he watches. I, I really, uh, I mean, you know this. Like, Denzel is a great film. Denzel's Denzel. <laughs> he is truly at the top of a a any actor that's ever lived. And for sure. Uh, he's so powerful. It's beyond respect and reverence that I have for him. It's like, I, I, I felt like I couldn't even stand up straight when I met him the first time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I admire him so much. I couldn't believe that he called that. I, I really... I didn't know that he was gonna do it. He didn't call me before, he didn't call me after. He just did that out of the kindness of his heart. That's and, wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's amazing. You know, everyone talks about you taking on the mannerisms and everything. What's your favorite location and then uh, favorite scene to shoot? My favorite location may be the Beale Street location mm -hmm. because they built six blocks. Oh. And it was so incredibly detailed. Wow. So I'm driving a Cadillac down the streets that they built. Right. And suddenly then I'm walking through Beale Street in the 50s, walking upstairs into Club Handy. And that was one of my favorite moments to get to shoot. Another one is the first performance that I did, which was 68 Special. Yeah. So that moment just like, it hit me so hard. If you get to take one of these Cadillacs home, which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it the I, pink one? I mean, it might be the pink one, because yeah. that's... That meant so much to him because it was it was his mom's car. Right. She never drove it though. Oh. Yeah. She she never drove, but uh, but she always it was her car and she knew it. Austin's Elvis immersion runs so deep. He spends a week in the hospital with appendicitis-like symptoms. Once filming raps, telling GQ, "My body just started shutting down the day after I finished Elvis." I might be misspeaking. But I feel like he got permission last night to finally start to let Elvis go because I think he's hung on so tight to the commitment. And it's notable, too, that the film does not shy away from unpacking the influence of black culture on Elvis's rock star persona and claims he stole and popularized black music. This sensitivity dates back to his early recording days at Sun Studios in Memphis and is seen all over pop culture, including Public Enemy's track, Fight the Power.
We talk about responsibility and understanding this connection to black music. Yeah. What, what, did you feel the responsibility around that specific topic as well? A huge responsibility. Because that's, that's one of those areas that I think has been so misconstrued and, mm -hmm. and misunderstood and brought out of context. Because the fact of it is, we do not have Elvis without black music. Right. We don't have Elvis without black culture. Right. His style. I mean, all of that was him going down to Beale Street and going, that guy's the coolest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> and that's how he picks it up. Oh, in a heaven, yeah. oh, heaven. To get my reward. Yeah. Man, I'm interested to get your take on it. Mm -hmm. I see it, like, he just had so much love. Yeah. And he's going, that guy moves the coolest I've ever seen somebody move. That guy sings the coolest I've ever right. seen somebody sing. That suit's the coolest suit I've ever seen. And suddenly then, he, but he also loves country music. He becomes this prism of all this inspiration. He becomes a, a, a product of his influences yeah. and his experiences and whatnot. Yeah, um, yeah and, and like like you said, it's it's about appreciation. Yeah. And, and that fine line between appro appropriation. Yeah. And, and I think it really comes down to like that credit. Giving credit what, where credit is due. You, in an effort to showcase his love for gospel music and black creators on screen, Elvis seeks guidance from B.B. King, AKA SAG Award winner, Kelvin Harrison Jr. When they first called me and were like, yeah, there's a B.B. King role in this Elvis movie. I was like, well, what, in what way? Mm. <laughs> and they were like, oh, well, they were friends. I was like, prove it. I was like, send me the research for a young black artist like myself. How do I stay true to myself? How do I take that advice that B.B. gives to Elvis and apply it to me? We don't do the business, the business will do you. Elvis was a fan of B.B. Right. And then Elvis was the headliner and B.B. still in Bill Street, you know? And I thought we handled it with a lot of respect and, 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 um, and, and nuance. Right, for sure. Rounding out Memphis's historic Beale Street, two of Elvis's favorite musical acts, Sister Rosetta through six-time Grammy nominee Yola, and Little Richard, as portrayed by model and dancer Alton Mason. It's so cool. Love that. Having like the honor to tell the story of the woman that invented rock and roll, and to be dark skin and plus in this space, going, oh, hey! You didn't expect to see me. And that's exactly what what, what we're pushing for. Absolutely. Yes. Always. I'll tell you, when I heard about the Elvis movie, right away I was like, hmm, okay. Let me see. Right. I, want, I want to see how they're going to do this. Because I can't lie, I am happy with what I've seen. There's a couple things that I didn't know before in terms about. of like the relationship with BB and whatnot. It's really important. Cool. There we go. <laughs> because we are the forefathers and foremothers of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. You know, we created this entire culture. It was so much fun because Little Richard is the originator, especially for guys like me. When you think of Prince, you think of Michael, yes. Charlie Talk Dino, to me. Andre 3000. Little Richard, he's the one who opened that gate and opened that door for mm -hmm. us to just be whatever that expression is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt a responsibility just to acknowledge the time that he was in. Segregation, religion being so heavy with his dad being a pastor. Yes. And then also sexuality. So that push and pull made me let it all hang out on stage. Yes. <laughs> More to come when Elvis, All Access, and E-Talk special returns. Welcome back to Elvis All Access, an E-Talk special. It's a global fan frenzy. Elvis Mania storms out of the gate with a 12-minute standing ovation in Cannes, then London, Sydney, Graceland, and of course, Toronto, where Elvis devotee Lainey lives out her teenage dreams. I'm a lifelong Elvis fan. You just hit it so hard. Thank you. In 1984, I got this book and got obsessed. First tapes that you got, were they the music of the 70s or were you grabbing 50s tapes? The first song I listened to was Blue Suede Shoes. Oh, okay. My dog is named Elvis. He's a blue <laughs> beagle. Anyway, that's why it's a thrill to be sitting here with the wow, two of you, cool. our modern Elvis and Priscilla. What I want is a husband. I am your wife. I am your wife. And Lisa is your daughter. She needs a father. I am her father. Priscilla was my gateway to Elvis, and what I loved about your performance is that 
we started to see the hints of the entrepreneurialism in Priscilla. Can you talk about injecting that into your performance even when she was so young? For sure. It really would have been easy to play her sensitivity as making her smaller, but I think that her sensitivity is in fact her strength. I'm still buzzing. I, I, yeah. really, I can't sleep it's, much. It hasn't fully dawned on me until we were in Memphis and I started realizing that you can't help but be somehow linked to his legacy. Yeah. He's Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. He feels so much larger than life. It ended up becoming the most personal thing I could ever imagine. You've toured the world. What's it been like to see Austin go through this? He's transforming. The energy is coming at you. So much attention. But now he's calmer and more centered in the moment. And I saw Leonardo went through it. You know, I saw Leonardo. It happened to him doing Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. What does that mean to you when you hear something like that? He was my hero. I, I, I uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's a huge compliment. That's so sweet. Well, look, Elvis famously toured internationally only in yeah, Canada. Yeah. I mean, how special is it to have yeah. this city, this country be a part of the launch? It's so special to me. I've had some of my fondest memories in either Toronto or, or Vancouver. And a lot of the early part of my career was doing work up here. And uh, so it just feels so nice to be back. I love it. More to come when Elvis, all access and eTalk special returns. Welcome back to Elvis All Access, an eTalk special. What I have done is try to make those that couldn't be in an Elvis concert or in an Elvis performance. I made a film that is a concert film. I felt it. I was there. It's a concert film. Yeah. Filmmaker Baz Luhrmann's glossy touch is all over Elvis, as is his signature remix of classics with a modern twist. I'm thinking about cutting it up with Hound Dog. Ooh, Hound Dog. You! In 1996, he reinvents Romeo and Juliet with Leo, Claire, and Love Fool. In 2001, it's Lady Marmalade in the Oscar-winning Moulin Rouge. And 2013, it's The Great Gatsby with executive producer Jay-Z and music drops from Kanye West and Lana Del Rey. This soundtrack boasts everything from Casey Musgraves to Doja Cat and Eminem. When Eminem did a song for the end credits, I asked him, I said, you understand the journey. The influence of Elvis, he was like that. M, he said, I want to write a song. I've got a song I'm doing with Dr. Dre and CeeLo. Obviously, we see what you did with Jay-Z and yeah, Greg yeah, Gatsby, Jay great. How do you decide? I'm like, it would be so nerve-wracking. I can hardly put together a proper playlist. How do you put together the proper soundtrack for the Elvis movie? Well, you know what? It's layered, and it's interesting. Austin Butler does sing Young Elvis, even though Lisa Marie herself said, The first time I saw the movie, I actually didn't catch it. I thought it was, they were using, he was using tracks. She said, I saw the movie the first time. I thought it was my dad. I was as shocked as you. I was shocked. It blew my mind. Wow. And then I have classic Elvis's voice in there. Mm -hmm. But I also have all these guest artists who are translating. I thought it was smart. All these artists came on because they were also inspired by Elvis or um, Big Mama Thornton or, you know what I mean, or Little Richard and B.B. King. And they wanted to come in and chime in and be a part of this musical history. It's done seamlessly. It's cool. It's cool. Welcome back to Elvis All Access, an eTalk special. The cast has been doing a great job of representing, but how fun was it, though, to get into those wardrobes from that time, especially when those wide leg pants finally made its way back into our closet, so. Yeah, it's like you walking around with the biggest fit, but you want to be like, oh, it's, 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 don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's easy. It's as easy as blue suede shoes, whether dripping in Prada at the Met with Priscilla by their side or shining on screen. The Elvis cast embraces the fashion assignment and appreciates my look too. This Marnie is incredible. Oh, thank you, baby. Like, that's, Appreciate that's it. fire, that's oh, great. Oh, Marnie. Oh, Fly. Yeah, I yeah. have that in all brown. Do you? Yes. Okay. That's fantastic. So you're Jumps. not the only sexy one. I'm just not showing my legs <laughs> Come today. Come on, let's go. <laughs> But the fits of Elvis's 50s, 60s, and 70s eras are back in style. And so is Austin's classic flair, earning raves from Vogue and GQ. The McQueen look, the oh, suede yeah. with the silk, and the GQ, and then 
everything in this film. The outfits I can, oh. fire. I loved everything that you've been wearing. Oh, thank Are you, you enjoying so it? I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. It's so fun to get to play in that space, you know? Clothes change the way you feel about yourself. And it changes the way you walk, and it changes the way you, your whole day goes. Yeah. I feel so fortunate that I get to go, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, 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 exactly. While watching the film, I was like, I was like, ooh, I want that jacket. Ooh, oh, I'd wear that shirt today. How much fun did you have? Priscilla, Priscilla was a fashion icon, too. She was too. on fire. Yes, talk she to was, me. Yeah, she was great. I mean, you know, what an honor that we had as a production to work with Prada to make the costumes. Stepping into those clothes were just, it was like stepping into another world. Everything was made from scratch, yeah. too. And, you know, we had go-go boots. Did you keep boards. anything? No. Oh. I'm so angry at myself oh. that I didn't. I was trying to be good. Welcome back to Elvis All Access, an E-Talk special. I just, I, I love it so much, and I feel so fortunate that I, I get to go to these, you know, these things. Fun things, events, you got Fun it. events. You got it. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, listen, man. congratulations, I really mean yeah, it. Yeah, man, thank you. Congrats. Well, that's it for me from Graceland. Thanks for watching Elvis All Access, an E-Talk special. We'll see you next time. One love. <laughs>